When presented with data, it's important that the context for the data is also included in the VAMAS files. These data have been converted from a multipack SBE file, and the file contained two spectra, and these spectra are organized so that when displayed in counts per second, we have a survey measurement that spans a magnesium 1S all the way up to the magnesium 2S and 2P. The data file contains a survey spectrum, and the question is why were these data split into two spectra? So we've got an initial spectrum that is acquired, and then a second measurement is performed that completes the survey measurement. And it's not clear why this is done until we display these data in counts per bin. And we can see here that one of the objectives of this measurement was to ensure that the oxygen 1s peak has been measured with the same intensity in terms of counts per bin as the magnesium 2s and magnesium 2p. And the reason that this is important is because the uncertainty in the data is proportional to the square root of the counts per bin. So when we measure the same intensity for each peak in terms of counts per bin, we've got the same uncertainty. So we should be able to calculate with the same precision the peak area of this oxygen 1s and also a magnesium 2s. What we can switch between counts per second and counts per bin is that the data file includes the information of both the counts per bin and also the dwell time per bin so that we can convert data between counts per second and counts per bin and we can already see that that has been very useful in understanding the precision with which we can measure the peak areas is the same across this spectrum even though we have some very small peaks here in terms of counts per second in terms of counts per bin they are comparable and therefore the precision in the area will be about the same the real anomaly in these data are the relative intensities of this magnesium 1s to this oxygen 1s. And we can see this if we quantify these data. And now I'm going to use the element library to create peaks. If I click on the magnesium 1s and then I say zoom and create when line selected, I click here, I end up with a region which allows me to integrate the intensity of this magnesium 1s and the region that has been created the relative sensitivity factor has been brought in which is a Schofield cross-section and since I've got a Schofield cross-section here this means that I need to include an escape depth correction because the Schofield cross-sections do not account for variation in intensity as a function of kinetic energy due to changes in the escape depth and currently it's set to none so this would be the correct setting for the relative sensitivity factors in the phi element library but I'm going to use the Schofield cross-section so what I'm going to do is use the option to adjust from none to the effective attenuation length I'm going to press apply and then it will update so that when I look at the regions property page it now says I've got an effective attenuation length so this would be appropriate only for these Schofield cross sections if I zoom out and then I select the oxygen 1s create a region here and then I'll put up a quantification table and I'm going to use quantification rather than regions and this is because I want to be able to quantify not just within the one VAMAS block I use the quantification option because when I select multiple VAMAS blocks in a row then the data within the row will be quantified one against the other so here I'm going to exclude the area and I want to include the relative sensitivity factor now press apply so here I've got a quantification table and it's telling me that I've got more magnesium than I have oxygen which is a bit confusing if this is magnesium oxide so perhaps this isn't magnesium oxide 
Well, before I'll accept this is not magnesium oxide, I'd like to do another experiment on these data. So what I'm interested in is what is the ratio of this magnesium 1s to the magnesium 2s? The magnesium 2s is in a different VAMAS block from the magnesium 1s, so I need to create a region on this second VAMAS block. So if I select the peak and then look for the magnesium 2s, I've still got zoom and create both ticked. So when I click here, a region is created, and this is because the regions property page is topmost on the quantification parameters dialog window. And so I've now introduced a region with another Scrofield cross section, and this is for the magnesium 2S. And because I used a quantification table as opposed to a regions table, I can select both of these VAMAS blocks. I should see the same amount of magnesium when measured using magnesium 1S as magnesium 2S, but I do not. So this makes me believe that the quantification between the magnesium 1S and the oxygen is not correct as it stands. The problem with this quantification could be related to the fact that I've used an effective attenuation length to correct for the escape depth. Now this makes an assumption that we have a bulk material. But if this is a thin film at the surface, then correcting as if it's a bulk will give us an incorrect quantification. Now there's a, an option that allows a, a thin film of a material to be quantified. And what I have to do is specify that I need a thin film correction as opposed to the effective attenuation correction and enter a value that is a, a measure of how thick I believe the film should be. So I'm going to enter 3 and I press apply escape depth settings. And when I use this layer approach to quantifying these results using Schofield cross sections, then I'm getting something that looks a little bit more reasonable. And I now have that the magnesium 1s is about 33%, the oxygen is close to 33%, and the magnesium 2s is giving a similarly consistent answer of about 32%. So this would suggest that rather than believing this is a different material from magnesium oxide, that this is potentially a thin film of magnesium oxide. So if I simply select the one VAMAS block, I now see that I'm getting about a one-to-one -one ratio between magnesium and oxygen. When we assume a bulk sensitivity factor, we're assuming that we are collecting all electrons from all depths within the surface of the material, and we need to correct for all of these electrons. When we have a thin film, rather than having an integral from the surface to infinity within the sample, we have an integral that goes between two limits, in this case P and Q. The sum of all signal from such a thin film is therefore different from the sum of all signal from all depths. And it's for this reason that a correction based on a thin film can make a difference to how a quantification is performed. Now it's not exact science, it's just an approximation based on an exponential decay of the signal as a function of depth within the sample. But nevertheless, it does give us a tool for investigating the quantification of a material where the quantification doesn't appear to work as we expect.